Welcome back to Rad History, your plug for the spiciest and juiciest historical events. Today's episode is sure to keep you at the edge of your seat. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell in this video to catch the latest videos from this channel. Mankind has been subjected to war on numerous occasions. Two of the greatest disasters to ever happen are World War I and World War II. We are familiar with fictional superheroes such as Iron Man, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Captain Marvel. What about the actual superheroes, the men and women who spend their lives defending their countries? They are the reason we live peacefully. They are constantly out on the front lines keeping us safe. The Air Force is one of the most respected departments in a country's defense system. What credits were given to the top aerial superheroes in history? How did these flying heroes spend their last days on Earth? If you are a lover of historical military affairs, you might have heard about some of these aerial heroes. Just how much do you know about these combat officers? How many of them are known at all? Number 10. James Doolittle Born on December 14, 1896, James Harold Doolittle was famous for leading a raid on Japan during the Second World War. Jimmy also participated in the First World War as a flying instructor. The Doolittle Raid, named after him, consisted of a statement-making act of retaliation against the Japanese after the attack on Pearl Harbor. On April 18, 1942, 16 B-25B Mitchell medium bombers carried out an air raid on some major Japanese islands, Tokyo, Osaka, Yokohama, Kobe, and Nagoya. Each of the bombers had a crew of five and was not escorted by fighter aircraft. Doolittle had expected to be court-martialed because he had launched the raid ahead of schedule and all the aircraft involved were lost. However, the Doolittle raid revealed a major fact during the Second World War. It showed Japan was susceptible to aerial attack and forced the Japanese to withdraw the majority of their units from the front line of Pacific war zones to increase their country's defense. Even though the attack on the Japanese dealt a little bit of damage, the raid significantly boosted the morale of the Americans. For his actions during this valiant raid, the American general received the Medal of Honor from President Franklin Roosevelt at the White House. In the course of his career, Doolittle also received the Army Distinguished Service Medal twice, the Distinguished Flying Cross thrice, the Air Medal four times, a Silver Star, a Bronze Star, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Forty-three years after the Doolittle Raid, James Harold Doolittle was promoted to general by President Ronald Reagan. He was inducted in the National Aviation Hall in 1967, just eight years after retirement. Number 9. Adolphe Pigout Adolphe was the first man to clinch the title of fighter ace ever during the First World War. The Rue de Ciel, or King of the Sky, was a French aviator and flight instructor. Pigout was the first fighter pilot to make a parachute jump from aircraft, using a Blériot Model 11 monoplane on 21 September 1913. He believed he was the first to fly a loop, and so did many others. However, the first loop was truly by a Russian army pilot named Pyotr Nesterov. 12 days earlier, Nesterov had used a Newport 4 monoplane to fly a loop at an army airfield close to Kiev. He once shared credit with his gunner for taking down German aircraft and forcing another to land. Shortly after, he was flying solo. While he was intercepting a German recon airplane, Pigoud was killed by his pupil, Unteroffizier Otto Kondolsky. He was only 26 at the time. Eventually, Kondolsky was shot down by the French pilot Roger Ronsorel. This action earned Ronsorel the title Le Vengeur de Pegout, which means the Avenger of Pegout. Before Adolphe died, he received a couple of awards such as the Knight of the Legion d'Honneur, Médaille Militaire, and Croix de Gare 1914 to 1918, which were awarded to pilots who had fought valiantly during World War I. Number 8. Robin Olds Son of Army Air Force Major General Robert Olds, Robin Olds was an American fighter pilot and general officer in the U.S. Air Force. The Triple Ace had a total of 17 victories in both World War II and the Vietnam War. For his exceptional aerial warfare skills and his reputation as a combat leader, Robin is still known as the best wing commander of the Vietnam War among aviation historians. By the end of his combat career, Olds had gunned down 13 German planes and destroyed 11.5 others on the ground. After Vietnam, Olds was promoted to Brigadier General. He spent his later years in non-operational roles as Commandant of the Cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy and as an official in the Office of the Air Force's Inspector General. Robin Olds quickly scaled up the ranks in the Air Force and amassed several combat decorations during his time. He was a two-time recipient of the Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, a four-time recipient of the Silver Star, a six-time recipient of the Flying Cross, and a 40-time recipient of the Air Medal. Olds was also awarded the Air Force Cross, the Distinguished Flying Cross in UK, and Croix de Guerre in France. 
It is no wonder why he was despised by many of his colleagues and seniors. He died on June 14, 2007, at the age of 84. Number 7. Ernst Udet Udet was a German pilot during World War I and a Luftwaffe colonel general during World War II. At the age of 19, he joined the Imperial German Air Service and was an infamous flying ace during World War I with a total of 62 victories. Ernst was the highest scoring German fighter pilot to make it out of the First World War alive. His first attempt to enlist in the air service on August 2, 1914 had been unsuccessful because of his short height of 160 centimeters. After enlisting as a volunteer with motorcycles, he passed his first year exam and was assigned the role messenger rider in the 26th Württembergischen Reserve Division. During his time as a messenger rider, he sustained an injury to his shoulder and was sent to a military hospital. Soon, the army dismissed a volunteer motorcyclist. Relentlessly, Udet continued in his pursuit to be readmitted into the army. This time, however, he would be enlisted as a trained pilot. Ernst received private flight training and got his civilian pilot's license in April 1915. Shortly after, he was enrolled in the Imperial German Air Service. A few of the awards Udet earned during his career include the Iron Cross, First and Second Class, Clasp of the Iron Cross, First and Second Class, Honor Cross of the World War, 1914-1918, Pilot Badge in Gold with Diamonds, and the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. On November 17, 1941, Ernest Udet shot himself in the head while he was on the phone with his girlfriend. It was reported that the launch of Operation Barbarossa, problems arising from Luftwaffe's increasing demands for equipment, and his strange relations with the Nazi party had contributed to his suicide. He was 45 years old at the time of his death. Number 6. Heinz Wolfgang Schnaufer Dubbed as the Spook of St. Tron, Schnaufer was a German Luftwaffe night fighter pilot and the highest scoring night fighter ace in history. He garnered a total of 121 victories during the Second World War, for which he was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves, swords, and diamonds. Heinz Wolfgang was involved in Operation Cerberus and the defense of the Reich during World War II. With the progression of World War II, Schnaufer clinched numerous victories and eventually became a squadron leader and group commander. A total of 2,300 takeoffs and 1,133 flying hours were registered in his flight book. He was taken as a prisoner of war by British forces and released a year later. He retired and took over his family's wine business. Unfortunately, he was injured in a road accident on July 13, 1959, while he was on his way to purchase some wine in France and succumbed to death in a Bordeaux hospital two days later. Number 5. Chuck Yeager Not only was Charles Elwood Yeager a U.S. Air Force officer and a flying ace, but he was also the first pilot to break the sound barrier in the history of aerial warfare. On October 14, 1997, Yeager set the record at Mach 1.05 at an altitude of 45,000 feet in level flight. He was awarded the McKay, Collier, and Harmon International trophies for his record-setting flight. After being enlisted into the U.S. Army Air Force as a private, Chuck became an aircraft mechanic at the George Air Force Base, California. Initially, he was not suitable to be enrolled for flight training due to his age and educational background. However, a couple of months after, the United States found itself in World War II, and the USAAF adjusted its recruiting standards. The Romantic Brigadier General was said to have named his aircraft P-51 Mustangs, Glamorous Glenn, after his girlfriend turned wife, Glennis Faye Dickhaus. The record-setting pilot was the first in his team to become a flying ace in the span of a day, after taking down five enemy aircraft in a single mission. Before his death on December 7, 2020, Chuck Yeager was the first commandant of the U.S. Air Force Aerospace Research Pilot School. Number 4. Adolf Galland This German Luftwaffe general was a flying ace that actively participated in World War II. Galland went on 705 combat missions and had 104 aerial victories against the Western Allies. He was involved in the Battle of Belgium, the Battle of Britain, the Battle of France, the invasion of Poland, the Chanel Front, and the defense of the Reich. During the Spanish War, he was a volunteer and supported the Nationalists by going on ground attack missions. Gallen was the mastermind behind Craig's Marin Operation Cerberus. The Valiant Flying Ace then commanded Luftwaffe's air cover for the mission, which ended up as a success. Coupled with the aerial victories accrued to him between 1940 and 1941, the General was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves, swords, and diamonds. On February 9, 1996, Adult Joseph Ferdinand Gallen took his last breath. Number 3. Douglas Bader Douglas Dogs Body Bader was a Royal Air Force flying ace during the Second World War. 
He was another active participant in World War II, having been involved in the Battle of France, Operation Dynamo, and Battle of Dunkirk, the Battle of Britain, the Hardest Day, Battle of Britain Day, and Aldertag, the Blitz, and Channel Front. While trying out some aerobatics in December 1931, his aircraft crashed and resulted in the loss of his legs. Dog's body was on the brink of death and should have succumbed to the inevitable. However, the strong pilot recovered and retook flight training. When he requested reactivation as a pilot, he was denied and retired against his will. When World War II came knocking, he was accepted as a pilot at the RAF. In August 1941, Sir Douglas Robert Stuart Bader was captured by the Germans. There, he was befriended by Adolf Gallen. After failing at escaping captivity, he was moved to Kolditz Castle and was there until 1945 when he was set free by the 1st United States Army. Shortly after his liberation, he retired from the Army and continued his career in the oil industry. As a disabled activist, he was appointed as a Knight's Bachelor at the Queen's Birthday Honors in 1976. He continued flying until his deteriorated health prevented him from doing so. Bader died on September 5, 1982, after a heart attack. Number 2. Manfred von Richthofen Richthofen became the ace of aces of the First World War with 80 confirmed aerial victories. The fighter pilot was regarded as a national hero and respected by his enemies within three years of joining the German air service. He was known as the Red Baron because he was entitled to being a Freier or Baron and he painted his aircraft red. He was initially perceived to be a lacking pilot. That was before he rapidly became one with his aircraft and garnered air combat victories. For each of his first 60 victories, Manfred ordered silver cups. Each cup was engraved with the date of the victory and the type of enemy aircraft that was taken down. Subsequently, the cups were made out of base metal as a result of Germans' reduced supply of silver at the time. Manfred had a set of maxims known as Dicta Bulch. These maxims contributed significantly to the success of the squadron and its pilots on several occasions. Number 1. Eric Hartmann The most victorious fighter ace in history, Eric Alfred Hartmann, was a German fighter pilot. During World War II, Hartmann went on 1,404 combat missions and engaged in aerial combat on 825 distinct occasions. His credits include gunning down 345 Soviet Union aircraft and seven American aircraft. Although Eric was forced to crash land his jet a total of 16 times, it was never because of a direct enemy shot. It was usually due to mechanical failure or sustained damage from enemy aircraft he had taken down. Der Schwarztufel, the Black Devil Der Schwarztufel, the Black Devil, had upgraded his award of Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross to Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves, swords, and diamonds in less than a year, with a total of 301 aerial victories as of August 25, 1944. His last aerial victory was merely hours before the Germans surrendered to the U.S. Army forces. Hartman was eventually sentenced to 25 years of imprisonment. After spending 10 in several Soviet prison camps and gulags, he was released in 1955. A year later, he joined the freshly inaugurated West German Air Force. He retired in 1970. Some of his awards include the Pilot Observer Badge in Gold with Diamonds, Iron Cross, First and Second Class, German Cross in Gold, Honor Goblet of the Luftwaffe, and the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with Oak Leaves, Swords, and Diamonds. Hartmann's famous saying, fly with your head, not with your muscles, summarized the techniques he used in his successful career. His attacking technique was to hold fire until he was in range of 66 foot or less to enemy aircraft. Then he would release a short burst of fire at that range. This technique helped to minimize wasted ammunition by accurately making his shots. His position would only be revealed at the last moment and the enemy would be unable to take evasive actions. The mesmerizing and gallant actions of these fighter pilots brought immeasurable victories to their respective countries. Some of these combat officers created fighting techniques that are still studied and used today. These aerial heroes have motivated several people to become pilots and serve their countries.